Yo, people, yo, people. What you see on screen is part of a new anti-Semitism bill that recently passed through the House. And looking at some of these screenshots, this is only one, there's even more. You will see that this, at least to me, wildly tramples all over the First Amendment. This is ridiculous. And so I thought I would react to some of the craziness that's written here. And then I, at the end of the video, I'll show you somebody on CNN attempting to criticize Marjorie Taylor Greene for opposing this and failing miserably. But without further ado, let's start off by just reading some of what it says here. This was posted by Thomas Massey, by the way, on Twitter. So this is a, a person in Congress. So you can't say that I found this somewhere and I'm making it up or whatever. But yeah. You know, here we see here, contemporary examples of anti-Semitism in public life, media, schools, workplace, and in the religious sphere could, taking into account the overall context, okay, I'm not sure what that means, include, but are not limited to, calling for aiding or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or an extremist view of religion. Now, I'm pretty sure calling for immediate violence against anybody is already illegal. So, yeah. Aiding in the harming of Jews is probably a crime, again, as it would be against anybody. So, I mean, I think that's already, this, this first bit is not too bad, right? It's already, I'm pretty sure this is already a crime. I do find it interesting that this this is a carve out for Jews. That doesn't, ex what, so for nobody else. So you can call for and justify the killing of another group, but not Jews. Is that how this works? It is interesting how this act only applies to Jews. Right. And I don't really get why. So the second one is where we delve into really interesting territory. Making, I don't even know what that word means, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such, or the power of Jews as collective, such as, especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Now, for the record, I actually don't think that there is this, like, world Jewish conspiracy that the Jews control everything. I don't, I don't think that's right. I haven't seen any real compelling evidence to suggest that's true. But I will say that this, this bill in and of itself actually kind of, imp like, without meaning to, I think it actually kind of promotes this theory. Because you can't, on one hand, say it's, it's, a, it's a myth to say that the Jews control everything. Also, by the way, we have shat all over the First Amendment to combat anti-Semitism. We have just spat all over it to help Jews. Do you not understand how to how people who who believe this theory, and even some who don't, will actually start to believe the theory that Jews control everything when you spit all over the First Amendment just for Jews? This is, again, the point I was making earlier. This is just for Jews. There is no mention of any other group here other than Jews, which is odd. Right, and, and to be fair, with, on this second point, I don't know of a big mainstream conspiracy that involves another religious group or anything about controlling everything, right? I don't know of such a theory, so I guess in that way it makes sense, but for the rest of it, I don't understand why Jews specifically get this carve-out that no one else gets. That's what I don't understand. And this is not me coming from a place of anti-Semitism. I'm just asking very, very serious and obvious questions here. And again, you don't help yourself. You can't spit all over the First Amendment to help Jewish people. And then simultaneously sit there and say, well, you know, if you peddle out the conspiracy that the world is controlled by Jews, like this is what this kind of stuff is what gives people that impression. Wrongly, I think. But you can see where they get it from, right? When you pass bull crap like this through the house. This the, the next one at the bottom here, accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group, or even for acts committed by non-Jews. Right, so this is kind of, I think this is, it's in this realm of basically saying that, you know, somebody does something bad, a Jew or a, or a group of Jews, or maybe not Jews at all, and then you say, oh, see, this is the Jews that did this. Now, this would normally be just be called lying, which I believe is covered under the First Amendment. I think you might be entering into defamation or libel territory if you actually name people specifically. But 
if I'm not mistaken, if you throw out these blanket terms, it is unfortunately legal. Right, or at least it, 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 it will be legal to do to everybody else, apart from the Jews now, apparently, which is odd. But okay. And again, this doesn't actually help Jewish people. I don't want Jewish people to go through anti-Semitism. And this right here doesn't help Jewish people. Giving them this special carve-out really, like, it really makes people believe point two about the big Jewish conspiracy. Like, you, you're not helping this when you when you pass a bill that says stuff like this. Let's go to the second screenshot. Denying the fact, scope, mechanisms, or intentionality of the genocide of the Jewish people at the hands of National Socialist Germany and its supporters and accomplices during World War II. Brackets, the Holocaust. Okay, so Holocaust denialism is illegal now. Again, what you will notice already is that these things, they sound reasonable, right? They sound reasonable. They don't, they don't sound like, you know, horrible things to ask of somebody. But at the same time, they are clearly trampling over the First Amendment. Like, very, very clearly trampling all over it. Being a Holocaust denier, I don't think, is a crime. Like, as far as I understand, I don't think it is, it is a crime. And I don't like that the government is dictating to you what you can and can't think about the Holocaust. Right. Because you have to understand, a lot of people, we're entering into an era now where people trust their governments less than ever before. And a lot of the time, it's, it's government institutions like schools that will teach you about the Holocaust, right? And I'm not a Holocaust denier. I don't deny what people tell me about how many Jews died in the Holocaust and all this. I don't deny it, but... A lot of people are like, well, the system taught me this, and I really don't trust the system. Hence, they start Holocaust denying. And when the system says, yeah, well, you know, instead of trying to make ourselves more trustworthy so you actually believe a word we say, we're just going to illegalize your speech. It is dumb. Dumb. Accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. Uh... Interesting. So what if they did in exaggerate the Holocaust? Obviously, they didn't invent it. But what if they do exaggerate? You know, what if they say that, like, a billion Jews died in the Holocaust, which obviously didn't happen? It wasn't that many. It, is that a crime? And again, what, what this does, and this is this is like what this does is very similar to to what I read, or at least what I can see from a lot of UK legislation. And I think what this bill is is you are, and as a Brit, I want you to know this, and I want you to refrain from this immediately, because you are one step closer to becoming Brit. And you may think that sounds like a good thing. Oh, yeah, Britain's a cool country. No, no, you don't want to be anywhere, you don't want to be anything like this country. This country, politically, is a mess, much more than yours. Trust me, you think America is a mess, politically? You think America is in tatters? You think you think that freedom is, is struggling in America? You want to look at Britain? You want to look over here if you want to see if you want to see what what a decaying society is, or a decaying country rather is looking like. And this bill is just one step of the way that if you don't think that this exact wording, if this passes and actually becomes law, you don't think a bill with this exact same wording, but you substitute out Jewish or Jews or whatever word you want to use, and you substitute that out and you put in LGBT. You really think they won't do this? You really think this is something that won't pass? And what's incredible is that if you pass this, you can't. Like, you can't sit there and say that, well, Jews get this carve out, but if LGBT people ask for it, we won't give it to them. So now it's going to be, like, everybody's going to be getting a... a, um... a carve out, apparently. Other than probably Americans, right? Because that, that's, that's how this works. That's how I suspect this will go. But it is it is interesting. But let's just carry on to the next one. Accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nations. What kind of rubbish? Why would this even be criminal? Isn't this like what half of the pro-Palestinians do? Aren't we just delving into territory now? This is territory of just criminalizing pro-Palestinians. How have we delved into this now? I'm not a pro-Palestinian. Generally, I stand with Israel just based on the information I've been provided with, but it is hard to understand why I should be happy about the idea of criminalizing pro-Palestinians. I'd rather not do that. 
And this is effectively that, right? Because this is what a lot of pro Palestinians will say. They'll accuse Jews of being loyal to Israel and not the um, the US. And again, do I think you should say it? No. Especially if there's no evidence for it. But, you know, what do you want me to say? It is, it's, um, this is the First Amendment, people. This is a key theme I want you to understand. The First Amendment allows you to say vile things. because you, And it's not because I like people saying vile things that I support the First Amendment generally. I do think there should be limits on speech, but I think they should be very limited. Very, very limited. What I do, what I do oppose is the government telling me what I can and cannot say, because then the government will. Will abuse that power, I think, and it won't end well. Denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. Uh, here we go again with the political suicide. I mean, you can't, like, <sighs> loads of people claim that Israel is basically an outpost of the US. And now you're, you're it sounds like you're effectively criminalizing people saying the Israel is a racist outpost of the US. So again, you're, you're like, you're not helping the situation here. You're just making it seem like you're making it seem like a cover up rather than a combat of anti Semitism, which is stupid. Because I don't see any evidence that Israel is a racist endeavor. Applying double standards by requiring of it a behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation. What? So being a hypocrite. When it comes to Israel is a crime. So if you're just hypocrite on Israel, if you if you hold Israel to different standards than you hold America to, you are a criminal. The fuck is this dumb shit, bro? Like, honestly, what is this? Using the symbols and images associated with classic anti-Semitism, e.g. claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel. To characterize Israel or Israelis. Oh my. God. I, uh, I mean we'll get on to, to some of that point. Later on. A little bit right. The you know. Blood libels and all of this. Again. Using symbols associated with classic anti-Semitism. To characterize Israel or Israelis. This is the unfortunate reality of free speech isn't it. Like. Racism, for example, is allowed in the United States. This is why the KKK, although effectively a miniature outpost at this point, the KKK is not like nearly as big as it would have been like way back like 80 years ago, right? Or whenever it was. But it's it's is mass it's it's massively shit now. Like there's basically nobody in the KKK. It was always shit in terms of their messaging, but I just mean in terms of like their the amount of people in it, like there's barely anybody in the KKK, yet the KKK is still legal. You don't see clan members being hauled into jail because it is covered under free speech. And I think anti-Semitism is the same because again, allowing the allowing it to go the other way is where we enter into some problematic areas. Drawing comparisons of contemporary Israel policy to that of the Nazis. So again, we're criminalizing pro-Palestinians now. I'm not even a pro-Palestinian. I'm telling you how fucked up this is. You're just criminalizing all the protesters now. That's what you're doing. You're criminalizing all of them. This is dumb. Holding Jews collectively responsible for actions of the state of Israel. Okay. Again. Don't see how this is a crime. Also, obviously not all Jews. But a lot of Jews identify with and or support the state of Israel. Obviously not all of them. But a lot of them, obviously, there are a lot of Jews who live in Israel. I think a lot of, like, a massive portion of Jews live in Israel. But I agree that you shouldn't hold Jews responsible for what Israel does as, as policy. But also, at the same time, again, the key point here is this is all free speech covered. But somehow, some way, this isn't free speech covered. It's all weird to me. And what's incredible is the carve out. Why do Jewish people get this carve out and nobody else does? 
it feeds into the second point about the big global conspiracy, right? I don't even believe in that, but like you're not helping the matter when you give Jewish people this kind of carve out, this this thing where basically free speech doesn't apply if you say certain things about Jewish people. That a carve out that is not given to any other group, which I find wrong. But yeah, let's get into the clip now about from CNN. So let's get into. That. So yeah, let's listen to this lady on the right criticize Marjorie Taylor Greene for opposing this bill. So yeah, let's just play this out for you. Wants to be focused on. And meanwhile, Marjorie Taylor Greene kicking up controversy for a completely other reason. Today she announced she was voting against a bill to combat anti-Semitism. And in her reasoning, she invoked an anti-Semitic trope. I want to read you what she said in her post on social media. She said, anti-Semitism is wrong but I will not be voting for the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act today that could convict Christians of anti-Semitism for believing the gospel that says Jesus was handed over to Herod to be crucified by the Jews. Now, that claim that Jewish people were responsible for the death of Jesus have, has historically been used to justify anti-Semitic attacks on the Jewish community. So just another example of Green's controversial behavior and also not the first time she has used anti-Semitic rhetoric. Aaron. Right. Here we go again. At least the media are somewhat consistent in the sense that they hate the First Amendment, <laughs> from what I can, from what I can see. That's the anal analysis I have. That like people in the mainstream media just really don't like the First Amendment. They just uh, they, they don't seem to like it very much. Oh well, you know, we should criminalize rhetoric that I don't like. Like, what is it with these people? You say that oh, this is used to to justify anti-Semitism again. Anti-Semitism is, is a thing that is, it comes from multiple places. Right. And nobody, nobody is suggesting, as far as I know, that we should murder Jews. Right. Because, because of the idea that they may have killed Jesus. Right. I'm not like, I don't, I don't, I'm not super educated when it comes to whether or not on exactly who killed Jesus, because... I mean, I saw something saying the Pope The Pope said that the Jews did not kill Jesus. But, so that's what I mean. It, I, I, I don't really know what to say on this. But I will say that, again, this whole, but it's used as a justification to hate on the Jews. It's an anti-Semitic trope. What? Uh, what? What, is, what is wrong with these people? Why do they really hate your freedom of speech so badly? Again. She did Marjorie Taylor Greene nowhere at no point said that because she thinks Jews killed Jesus, that therefore Jews should be murdered and that Jews should be harmed or genocided or something. At no point does she ever say this. What is wrong with these people? Like, what is wrong with these morons? How, like, how do you even come to such a conclusion? You can't just say that, oh, because something has been used to promote anti-Semitism, therefore it can no longer be said. It's utterly nonsensical. And again, this only seems to apply for Jewish people. And the fact that it only applies to Jewish people is actually going to create more, not less anti-Semitism, because people are going to look at this and think, hold on, why do you guys get this special carve-out that spits all over the First Amendment, at least from where I stood? But nobody else does. Nobody else, as far as I can see, is mentioned in this bill. And this is just, this is a step on the road to Britain, people. You're, you're getting there closer and closer. If this bill goes through, get ready to, get ready to basically become a bigger Great Britain. Because soon, the, the, this exact same bill, or at least similar wording, will be used for LGBT, probably Islamophobia. Right? And you'll have your... And just like that, you'll be in the realm of Britain. Where free speech is just in the gutter in this country, frankly. Free speech is... is I don't even know what to call free speech in this country, if it even really exists, frankly. But yeah. So she fails miserably as usual. Oh, you, you, you're, you're pushing rhetoric that is that might cause anti-Semitism. Oh my goodness, bruh. You people and your hatred for rhetoric you don't like. 
bro. It's ridiculous. Shut up. I don't like anti-Semitism, but this whole thing about, oh, well, you, you know, this is used by anti-Semites. So? So what? If this is what people believe, they're allowed to say so. The fuck? The fuck is this dumb shit? The fuck is this dumb shit? So people who believe that Jews killed Jesus are no longer allowed to say so. What the actual... My... What? Ugh. I mean, it's just outrageously dumb what she's saying here. Because it might be used for anti-Semitic purposes. What? What? So don't say something that you believe to be true because it might be used for anti-Semitic purposes. If you don't use it for anti-Semitic purposes, why should you not allow to be able to say this whole thing? As I've, I think I've shown to you, this bill is a crock of shit. Let me know what you lot think about this bill down below. It, to me, it's an utter waste of time. But yeah, remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.